Mayor, I'd like to call the um, Mayor and Council meeting for the um, December 5th, 2013 to order at 8 p.m. on roll call. Council members Catamania. Here. Castiglia. Here. Convoy is absent due to a work commitment. Pedagano. Here. Boncino. Here. Coletti. Here. Mayor Mola. Here. We have a quorum. Will everyone please rise for our prayer and flag salute? O oh God, our Father, we ask you to bless our meeting with you. Trust a fatherly care and protection. Please remove all selfishness and prejudice from our heart and plant therein the keen sense of justice and the greater love for you and our neighbor. Guide us in our deliberations so our decisions will always please you and bring peace and happiness to our community. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Whereas Chapter 231 of the Public Law of the State of New Jersey requires that the commencement of the very meeting is stated by the presiding officer. Now, therefore, be advised the meeting requirements of this meeting have been met by posting an annual notice in the record of Hackensack, the Herald News of Woodland Park, and by posting such notice in the office of the borough clerk as well as in the public place within the municipal building and by notifying interested citizens. Said notice was published on January 1, 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, meeting is, uh, will be on Cablevision, uh, Channel 77, Tuesday at 12 noon, Thursday at 4 p.m., and Friday at 12 p.m. Thank you. Mayor, this evening, under the approval of minutes, we have the November 7, 2013 regular meeting, the November 7, 2013 executive session, the November 14, 2013 work session. Uh, may I have a motion to do all three? If you weren't at any of them, just let Mr. Kazmok know so he can put it down. May I have the motion, please? Mm -hmm. Mr. Vonsino, second? I, I'll have to abstain. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Coletti. Coletti, thank you. I thought I recognized you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're abstaining on yes. what? Yes, on all of them. On all of them, okay. Call a roll, please. Council members Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Abstain. Convoy is absent. Pettigano? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, this evening under ordinances, we have resolution 358-13, introduce ordinance 13-30 on first reading. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to fix the salaries, wages, and compensation of the officers, employees, and servants of the Borough of Elmwood Park, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, for the year 2013, be passed and adopted on first reading, and be it resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in the municipal building on Thursday, December 19th, 2013, at 8 p.m., or soon thereafter, a same can be heard, at which time and place all persons interested in said ordinance can be heard. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk be, and he is hereby authorized to advertise in a legal newspaper, a notice of introduction, and final, and it, and final hearing is required by law. Motion, please. So move. <coughs> Mr. Ketamania, second? Second. Mr. Pettigano, any discussion? Call a roll, please. On roll call, Council Members Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Convoy is absent. Pettigano? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Motion carries. These are the salaries of uh, uh, the uh, department heads and non union employees. That's what this ordinance is about. This evening, also under first re reading, we have Resolution 359-13, Introduce Ordinance 13-31 on first reading. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance amending Ordinance 14-19.10 of the Code of the Borough of Elmwood Park entitled False Alarms be passed and adopted on first reading. And be it resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in the municipal building on Thursday, December 19th, 2013, at 8 p.m. or as soon thereafter as same can be heard, at which time and place all persons interested in said ordinance can be heard. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk be, and he is hereby authorized to advertise in a legal newspaper a notice of introduction, and final hearing as required by law. Motion, please. So moved. Mr. Coletti? I'll second. Mr. Castiglia. Uh, any any comments? Yes, Mayor, if I may, uh, the council and the police department worked long and hard on uh, making sense of these fines. Uh, major consideration were, were our seniors who uh, sometimes inadvertently alarms go off, they don't know how to shut them down, and then they're paying fines that they simply can't afford. So uh, hopefully uh, this will help them out, and uh, that's it. Any other comments? May I just indicate, thank you, Bob, that the... Uh, 
For the first, second, and third false alarm, uh, there'll be an issue, uh, a warning issue. So you get three, and then you strike out after that. That's what the chief tells us. On the fourth one, it'll cost you $50. On the fifth false alarm, it's $100. On the sixth, it would be $300. And on the seventh and subsequent, it's going to be uh, $500. Okay? And that's, with, that's within a year, isn't it, Mayor? Within a year. Okay. And this goes for uh, individuals and businesses. Call the roll, please. On roll call, council members Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Convoy is <coughs> absent. Pettigano? Yes. Oncino? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Motion carries. And our final ordinance on first reading this, this evening, resolution 360-13, introduce ordinance 13-32 on first reading. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to fix the salaries, wages, and compensation of the employees of the Department of Public Works in the Borough of Elmwood Park in the County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, from January 1st, 2014 through December 31st, 2016, be passed and adopted on first reading. And be resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in the municipal building on Thursday, December 19th, 2013 at 8 p.m. or soon thereafter as the same can be heard at which time any persons interested in said ordinance can be heard. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk be and is hereby authorized to advertise an illegal newspaper, a notice of introduction and final hearing as required by law. Motion please. So moved. Mr. Castiglia, Mr. <coughs> Catamania, any discussion? Yes, uh, if I may, Mayor. Sure. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to compliment Keith Cosmark for a guide us to have a really a good negotiation with DPW workers. He did a great job. Thank you, Keith. It went thank very you. smooth. And also on the other side, we thank Colonel Stangowitz for being so fair with the workers. I think it was excellent. I admire him for what he did. So. Congratulations, guy. It was a good job. You did a good job. Thank you. If Thank I may, Mayor. Yes. Yes, I also would like to uh, uh, congratulate our administrator on the handling. Uh, it was uh, very thorough, efficient, and uh, the proceedings, uh, the resounding theme there was uh, fairness. Uh, everyone left the table as a winner, as negotiations should end up, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, not having to deal with these contracts for what's that, two years, Keith? Three. Three years. <clears throat> so it's all settled for three years. That's it. That's it. Th Thank through, you. Through you, Mayor, if I could just explain the process um, to the You've public. You've been complimented enough. How many yeah. did I <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be. He's going to compliment himself now? I'm going to be more technical. Um, just so the council is aware, um, because we have actually not met since we concluded these negotiations. Um, but I, in speaking with the um, members of the Teamsters who represent the DPW employees, um, we have sent them a revised copy of the contract. Um, the union membership has ratified um, the changes to the contract. What we're doing tonight is simply introducing the salary ranges that will exist and the increases that will be set for the next three years. At the meeting in two weeks, we'll have final adoption on this ordinance, and we will also ratify the contract. Um, and this also will be a work session agenda for next week um, in executive session. Thank you. Call the roll, please. On roll call, council members Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Convoy is absent. Pettigano? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, this evening on second reading, we have resolution 361-13, introduce ordinance 13-28 on second reading. Whereas public notice has been given by the borough clerk that an ordinance entitled an ordinance amending ordinance 2-63.1 of the Code of the Borough of Elmwood Park, titled fees charged by the borough clerk's office. Whereas said ordinance was introduced and passed at a meeting held on Thursday, November 7th, 2013, and that further consideration of this ordinance would be taken up at this meeting. And whereas all persons interested in said ordinance were given the opportunity to be heard concerning same, now therefore be it resolved by the mayor and council of the borough of Elmwood Park that the ordinance entitled an ordinance amending ordinance 2-63.1 of the Code of the Borough of Elmwood Park entitled fees charged by the borough clerk's office pass on final reading. A mayor will need a motion to open to the public. May I have a motion to open, please? So moved. Mr. Boncino, second? Second. Mr. Castiglia, all in favor, opposed to order. Anyone who wishes to be heard on this, it's the, uh, the fees for taxis, a taxi driver, limo, permits for limos, and uh, a letter of domicile. <coughs> Also, uh, raffles, and basically that's it. Anyone? 
I'll close the public portion. May I have a motion on the uh, ordinance, please? So moved. Mr. Vonsino, second? Second. Second. Mr. Who was that? Glenn. Mr. Glenn. Mr. Mr. Pedagano, uh, call the roll, please. Any uh, comments? Call the roll, please. On roll call, Council Members Catamani? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Convoy is absent. Pedagano? Yes. Vonsino? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, this evening under the consent agenda, we have resolution 362-13, payment of bills, resolution 363-13, confirmation of escrow checks, resolution 364-13, confirmation of payroll, resolution 365-13, refund taxpayers for overpayments due to tax court appeals, block 1016, lot one, resolution 366-13, refund taxpayers for overpayments due to tax court appeals on block 1202, lot 22, Resolution 367-13, resolution supporting the safe, sober, or get pulled over 2013 year-end holiday statewide crackdown. Resolution 368-13, resolution confirming endorsement for community development uh, block grant project improvements to Fleischer's Brook. Resolution 369-13, authorize a shared services agreement between the Borough of Maywood and the Elma Park Fire Department. Resolution 370-13, authorize financial services, Lurch, Vinci, and Higgins, LLP. Resolution um, 371-13, change order one and final for the emergency generator installation at Borough Hall. Resolution 372-13, resolution to enter into a grant agreement for the rehabilitation of the senior center kitchen. Resolution 373-13, executive agreement for emergency water main and sewer main repairs. Resolution 374-13, confirming endorsement for the Community Development Block Grant Project improvements to Parkview and Columbia Avenues. Resolution 375-13, award bid for Gall Avenue sanitary sewer replacement to John Garcia Construction. And Resolution 376-13, auth resolution authorizing a pilot program extending the one way on Gilbert Avenue. Motion, please. So moved. Mr. Coletti, second. 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 Mr. Vonsino, any discussion? Uh, I'd just like to indicate that Resolution 368-13 is a community development grant for $215,000 if we get that. That's the grant that uh, was uh, done by P10K from Boswell to go along with uh, Garfield. They would go in with us jointly on that. And uh, uh, much of the land, all of the land will be in Garfield. But unless we clean up that brook, even though that small section is in Garfield, we're not improving the flow. So that is where we're going on that. Okay? Call the roll, please. On roll call, Council Members Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Convoy is absent. Pedagano? Yes. Monsino? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Mayor, this evening under departmental reports, we have the library minutes for September 23rd, 2013. Department, Department of Public Works for October 2013. Municipal Court Report for October 2013. Police Department Report for October 2013, and the Building Department Inspection Report for August 28, 2013 through November 1st. Motion, please. So moved. Moved by Mr. Bonsino. Second? Second. Mr. Catamania, <coughs> any discussion? Call the roll, please. On roll call, Council Members Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Convoy is absent. Pedagano? Yes. Bonsino? Yes. Coletti? Yes. And finally, Mayor, we have applications for the mobilization of Animal Rights Incorporated for their 50-50 raffle. Motion to approve. So moved. Mr. Coletti and Mr. Second. Pedagano. Any discussion? Call, call, call a roll. On roll call, Council Members Catamania? Yes. Castiglia? Yes. Convoy is absent. Pedagano? Yes. Foncino? Yes. Coletti? Yes. That concludes my portion of the meeting, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, committee reports, Mr. Catamania? Thank you, Mayor. All right. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to announce my daughter, Laura, on Saturday, November 30th, at 11.30 in the morning, gave a birth to a beautiful little girl, oh. Alisa Sydney. Congratulations. Congratulations to Australia. You looked, uh, <laughs> you looked a little older when you walked in, Grandpa. I know, it's yeah. uh, really. <laughs> I'm a grandpa for the fifth time. May God bless them. My daughter, my son-in-law, uh, is a wonderful guy and my granddaughter, the new granddaughter. The second thing, I have homeowners having Christmas party by Giovanni on December 11 at 6.30. And finally, Mayor, 
the time is coming. I will retire from teaching the 1st of January. Wow. I will miss teaching very much. I feel very sad when I think about it, but we must go on. I will miss the children, the students, and I had a good time. I enjoy myself. Take the kids to Italy, tour Italy, show so much. I wish I, I, wish I could have done more, and I am uh, grateful for being a teacher. I was a teacher. I started in 1970 at Wayne Hills High School. I left teaching. I was very sad. The reason was I couldn't afford my mortgage those days. I couldn't pay my mortgage. I was always short a few dollars. Because I have two kids. Then when the third child came, I decided to change trade. And I did really well. I, I regret missing all those years teaching. And then uh, I went back to teach. Memorial High School, supposed to be a temporary job, part-time. Mr. Lazzaro couldn't find an entire teacher. So I said, please help me out until I find a teacher. Now, 12 and a half years later, they still can find a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to stop, enjoy the rest of my days, enjoy my grandchildren, and then I have things to do. The mayor and I are going to get together many times. I keep your company, Mayor. Well, we're both educators, so I know what you're going through now. You, you're going to miss the kids. I don't know I if you miss all the other stuff, but you'll miss the kids. Well, a few, few things I could have done without, but I don't want to discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, and congratulations on thank both. You. Mr. Voncino? Yes, Mayor, a couple items. Uh, first, a resolution 367-13 is a resolution supporting the drive sober or get pulled over uh, 2013 year-end holiday statewide crackdown. As you know, we're entering into a holiday season and, and this initiative is taking place between December 6th and January 2nd, 2014. Um, a, couple of, a couple of points that were made in the resolution that I thought I'd, I'd pass along. Impaired drivers on our nation's roads kill someone every 30 minutes, 50 people per day, and almost 18,000 people each year. And 19% of all motor vehicle fatalities in New Jersey in 2012 were alcohol related. So uh, this council, the Borough of Elma Park, together with our police department, uh, declare support for this initiative. And I just wanna make the residents aware of this critical issue and ask for their support uh, to, uh, to this initiative. And the second item I brought up last meeting was the New Jersey SEM and the electric electricity auction that's taking place on December 10th. <coughs> and they set a strike price for electricity at 6.7 cents per kilowatt hour, which is 5% below the PSE and G rate. Um, they will go out for bid on December 10th and they will not accept anything above the 6.7 cents, if they don't get a, a, a bid that is aligned to that, they will go out for a rebid between let me see, December 17th and January 30th. So hopefully by the 12th, I'll have an update on how that, that auction went. Uh, the, the term of the contract will be a 17 month term uh, starting uh, beginning of January. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Castigli? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Frank, you said five grandchildren? You said the fifth one, right? This is your fifth grandchild? Number five. I mean, yeah. you have. I still got you by one. Son of a gun. Six. It's a competition. I got to sell the, <laughs> the television for my kids. I got old girls, though. <laughs> oh, I got one boy. Okay, uh, this is my first meeting since Election Day, so I'd like to congratulate all the winners. Dan, uh, Joe Dombrowski, Steve, congratulations, everybody. Uh, if there's anything that I can do, you know, during the transition, just let me know. Uh, I'd li also like to thank all my supporters, you know, the people that actually voted for me. Uh, as some people know, I, I had a heart procedure done in September, and I missed uh, some meetings due to that. It's, it's going fine now. I think, I think they cured what my problem was. It seems to be fine. Uh, and then I went on a rather well-publicized vacation. We went down to Walt Disney World. Now. Uh, this trip was planned six and a half years ago when uh, my twin granddaughters were born. So I'm not gonna make any apologies for those two actions. 
Uh, I didn't think that they'd become political issues, but uh, somewhere along the line they did. I also did miss the public meeting right before Veterans Day. And I usually like to say something about the veterans, so I'll do that now. Uh, I'd like to thank all our veterans and all our current military personnel. Uh, we all know, you know what we owe these people. Uh, the freedoms that we enjoy just wouldn't exist if, if, if it wasn't for them. Uh, also, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a big Facebook type person. Uh, I really don't believe that everybody I know should see a picture of what I had for breakfast this morning. But uh, some of my family members got me onto, onto that, I guess, three or four years ago. So I started a Facebook account back then. I very rarely, I very rarely look at it now. I did get in touch with some people that I probably haven't seen for 50 years. Uh, it's a nice thing, I guess, but you know, they all live in Florida, so you know, it doesn't really, doesn't really do me any good other than over that, you know? But just before Veterans Day two years ago, my daughter, uh, I guess it's, you call it a post, she put a post on the Facebook page. Uh, she's not a very political person, and even though I was in the Marine Corps and I spent over a year in Vietnam, we never, we never would talk about anything like that. You know, it's something that really we never, we never talked about. I just didn't think that she had any opinions, you know, about military services one way or another. But she did put a post, like I said, on the Facebook site. Uh, I didn't know if she made it up at the time or if she copied it from another post somewhere else. But I, I still remember it almost word for word. And I'd like to, uh, you know, I, I found out later on, I guess she didn't make it up herself because I saw it posted on other sites, but with different wording. The words weren't quite the same. So I guess she added a little of her own to it. Uh, I'd like to read it the way my daughter posted it two years ago. Here's the way it goes. A veteran is someone who at one point in their life wrote a blank check payable to the United States of America for an amount up to and including their life. Uh, that's beyond honor. And there are way too many people in this country today who no longer remember that fact. Now. It's rather short and right to the point, because that, be, that would be something that she would write. Uh, we need to remember these people and their commitment. You know, I know we all say that we do, you know. Uh, Veterans Day comes along and we all, uh, we all honor them. Uh, more importantly, you know, they, they need to know that we remember them. Uh, that's the most important fact out of the whole thing. And, and in any way that we can do that, whether it be a donation to one of their organizations, uh, Maybe when you see an old vet, engage in a conversation with him, you know, ask him a little bit about his service. Or maybe even a thank you, you know, that's enough. Uh, like I said, I was in the Marine Corps, and, you, and you, we had this honor that when you see somebody that you know is in the Marine Corps, whether he's got his little hat on or whatever it might be, it's almost mandatory that you say Semper Fi to this guy, so he knows that you were in the Marine Corps also. And I saw when coming out of a, of a store the other day, he must have been in his 80s, and his wife was right behind them, and they were holding hands. And I saw his cap, you know, Marine Corps. So I said, Semper Fi to him. And his wife stopped right away, and we spoke for a, a minute or two, and then I walked out the door. And as I was walking out, I heard her ask him, who is that? And he said, that's my brother. Now, that's something that, that the Marine Corps has always been known for. But all right, what, mainly, like I said, mainly here, uh, you know, recognize these people. We see them on the street all the time. We, we know who they are. You see an old guy walking down the street, and he's got a sweatshirt on, it says Army. You know, obviously he did, he did something along the line somewhere for the country. So let him know that we know him, you know, not that we just pass him by. Uh, I'm a member of the VFW and the American Legion also, and as councilman, I'm the, lia the liaison uh, for the Veterans Alliance in town. So as of January 1st, I won't be doing that anymore. But I will be, uh, I will try to do my best to stay connected to these organizations. So if something comes along, I mean, I'm still a member of each, so if something comes along that I think you guys might really need to know. I know you're going to have another guy going in, but uh, if it's something that I think I should bring to your attention, I'll probably be out here. All right, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pettigan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the health department uh, is having an adult health free blood pressure and health consultation on December 17th. That's a Tuesday at the Senior Center at 500 Boulevard. Uh, all Elmwood Park Lodi residents are welcome. Uh, senior center membership is not required. Appointment is not needed. Uh, and child health clinic 
uh, immunizations are for infants and children to 18, for uninsured families, flu shots, uh, child health clinic for Elmwood Park and Lodi, uh, at the Elmwood Park Health Department in the municipal building. Uh, you can call 201-996-2038 to make an appointment. Uh, also, dog and cat licenses are due January 2014. The health department will be mailing renew notices to all pet owners on file. Uh, new puppies and kittens must be licensed beginning uh, seven months of age. Proof of current rabies vaccine, spay, neuter, documentation required form can be obtained at the Elmwood Park web page and sent via the postal service. Also, uh, the Affordable Health Care Act, the Affordable Health Care Marketplace, I should say, for uninsured citizens uh, is available now as most of us here every day. Uh, the enrollment is ongoing. Uh, and online, it's www.healthcare.gov. Uh, and you can enroll by telephone, which is 1-800-318-2596. And general enrollment information is 1-800-706-7803. Um, also, we just left. Um, hurricane season, we did pretty well, except for a couple of the councilmen here. I think it was targeted. Um, but we are coming up to some snow, and uh, the snow season, and Sunday we may get a bit of a storm. So I would like to uh, have all residents be prepared in a normal way with a flashlight and water and your generators. Check them out. Keep them away from your windows. Uh, we don't know what we're going to get, uh, like that box of chocolate. Um, hopefully we have a warm, um, safe winter um, for all people in Elmwood Park and everywhere, of course. Um, and that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Coletti? Larry, your uh, granddaughter put it very well when it comes to speaking about our veterans. Very well. Yeah. Regarding our fire department, uh, at the last meeting they reported a series of car, uh, car fires, small house fires. Uh, all our hydrants are up and functioning. And regarding the River Drive project, it was stopped momentarily uh, to redesign the ingress and egress of the curbs and radiuses to accommodate the uh, fire trucks. And this is kudos that goes out to uh, our fire administrator, Mike Pressler, and uh, Chief Scott Mutel for picking up the mistake in a timely fashion, saving all parties in concern heartache down the road. Regarding GIF, our joint insurance fund, no new earth shattering items to report. They have a statutory surplus of $7,976,000 and that is after dispersing a dividend to the town membership. Stay the course guys. And pursuant to our school board at their last meeting on November 26th, it was mostly housekeeping items with an eye on their January 28th ref referendum. And I know what I'm about to say is old news, but I think it's very important that the residents of uh, Elmwood Park understand this referendum. Uh, and that proposed referendum is seeking a $10 million uh, asking, well, with six million of it, being uh, furnished by the taxpayers of Elmwood Park and four million uh, will be coming from a state grant. All the funds are earmarked for health and safety issues only without deviation and some of them are major water related repairs throughout the district buildings to be remediated, approximately 43,000 square feet of roofing to be remediated, remediation to existing buildings to accommodate more classrooms due to student population growth. Uh, the financing will go through Bergen County to achieve a lower interest rate. And based on an assessed valued home of $333,000, the additional tax levy will be an average of $71 per year over a 20 year span, average that is. 
So it'll fluctuate. Some years it'll be less, some years it'll be more. The voting date scheduled for this referendum is January 28, 2014. And polls open at 2 p.m. and close at 9 p.m. And Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. Giblin, no report? Uh, let me indicate in my report that uh, we did get the grant of $25,000 from community development in Bergen County uh, to uh, put new uh, uh, kitchen cabinets and, and clean up the kitchen area down at the recreation center. So we received $25,000 for that. Uh, we also, from community development, were able to uh, convince them that the money left over from the Orange Avenue uh, project to pave that street we had $43,000 left over, and we were able to pave Willow Street from River Drive all the way up to uh, uh, Orange Avenue. So that, that's all been paved, and it doesn't cost us a, a penny on that. Uh, you may know that uh, in the past year or two, we hired an outside firm to help us collect tickets that people get down at the violations department and uh, then refuse to pay them. Uh, I've been told by the violations department that uh, a letter is going out or has been going out indicating that uh, if they don't pay their ticket, an outside company will come in and charge them 22% beyond the cost of the ticket for the ticket to be paid. And uh, I'm told that people are finding that out and they don't want to pay the extra 22% on top of what the cost for the ticket. So a lot of people are now paying it. Those who aren't paying it, uh, number one, have either passed away and somebody has contacted us, or this company is gonna go out and track them down and they'll get their 22% on top of the ticket. So that's working well. Um, there, there's another grant that uh, we're applying for besides the one that was on the agenda, and this is from Boswell also. It's for $100,000 and it goes to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, Bureau of Dam and Safety and Flood Control. And we're applying with the city of Garfield again to get $100,000 to, uh, to clean up the snags and the shawls involved in Fleischer Brook to help improve the flow of that brook. So if, if we get that and we get the community development grant, that's gonna be over $300,000 that we will use to uh, clear up and try to improve the flow of Fleischer Brook. Uh, in relation to uh, Mr. Castiglia be, uh, being a Marine, he's never a former Marine, he's always a Marine. Uh, I had a lot of fun with Larry. I, I, I read a book on Vietnam when I went on vacation. And uh, you look at Larry now, he's a mild man and man. And uh, I was absolutely surprised reading what uh, some of the military, the Army, and, and the Marines did in Vietnam and what he went through. And I questioned him to see if everything in the book was correct and he had all the right answers. So he was there. He can, I can vouch for that now. And uh, unfortunately, well fortunately today when people go overseas, they come back and they're heroes and respected. When Larry came back, he was told to take his uniform off. Everybody was too pleased with him coming home that he was in Vietnam. and I. And, I don't think he's ever forgotten that he's told to take his uniform off or, or else be abused by some people. And I'm glad that's changed, Larry, and I'm yeah. glad you brought it up so yeah. that we can honor those who do serve. Yeah, yeah. Okay? I was only in the Army. My brother was a Marine also, and I had to live with that, and I had to live <laughs> with you. So I'll get my day in here one day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the conclusion of my, uh, my statement. Uh, May I have a motion to open to the public, please? So moved. Mr. Voncino? Second. Mr. Pedigano, anyone in the audience who wishes to be heard? Give your name and address, please. And a phone number. Dan Goldbeck, 44 Godwin Ave. Uh, just following up on something I brought up a few months ago regarding the library and the uh, Wi-Fi, whether it was, my question is, has it been uh, discussed? Yes, it's been discussed, and I think we're going to go through with it. Okay, so realistically, January? Oh, I'm not going to give you a realistic. <laughs> We're going to go through okay, it. Okay, but it's, it's being worked on. Yes. Right? Okay, thank you. That's all. Anyone else? Jeffrey Fryer. Oh, yeah. 
Jeffrey Would you repeat your name, please? We didn't hear it. Stop calling me Rob. One thing I'd like to bring to the attention, maybe you're aware of it, maybe you're not. I know on, on a few occasions over the past few months it's been mentioned about putting your trash out. Don't put it out before 6 p.m. the night preceding when the trash pickup is for recycling and for uh, garbage. Um, one problem, that's fine, and I, I agree with that. And uh, one thing I would like to comment on, though, is the fact that likewise, if the citizens should comply with these things, which I, I believe they should, is that the companies who pick up the uh, recycling and pick up the garbage, likewise, take the pail, and instead of rushing down the street as they do, almost running behind the truck, in fact, a lot of occasions they are, they simply slide the pail, and sometimes it ends up a full car with out in the street. Sometimes it ends up right next to the curb. But the guy who, the gentleman from the uh, DPW who does sweep the street, does a very good job providing the garbage pails are not in the street. I pick mine up quickly, I'm home, I'm retired, but many of the other people in the neighborhood and up and down the streets, they take the pail, the pail's put out at the curb on, on the sidewalk, and then when they just, the uh, recycling people, I and mean, people who ever pick these up, just slide them in the street. So the streets really don't get swept as well as they could if the pail is simply just at least thrown on the grass. And it, it becomes more of a persistent problem over time. My recycling and my garbage are the same day. I think, I think the garbage men see that uh, the recycling, which usually comes first, they don't put it at the curb or on the sidewalk, so I'll just do the same thing. And it seems that if you go up and down the street, it's the same way. Along those lines, I know a few meetings ago I mentioned that, has anyone ever considered, and I think it was mentioned that there never seemed to be uh, much of an effort or at least a, an agreement between the citizens that they should go to alternate side of the street parking so that the street can be swept properly. Um, I, I'd like that maybe to be considered because I think it would make the, uh, first of all, cars get moved, and I do see cars that don't get moved for months, that the car would have to be moved, otherwise it would be ticketed. Or, and likewise, if the car uh, is not moved, it would be noticed. And likewise, it would also, the street would be swept better would be clean, much more readily done, and they could frequently uh, sweep at least once a week, like they do, but again, it, would, it wouldn't just go right around the car that's parked there and everything, and I think it would make the community a, a cleaner place to live. That's all I have to say, and other than that, uh, hopefully your uh, prediction of a bad Sunday or wrong. Yes. But thank you. One thank bad you. Sunday and a mild winter is okay. Mr. Kazmark will check with the, uh, the people who uh, pick up the recyclables. And, and garbage. And garbage. And garbage. Okay. And uh, uh, if you don't have any car that hasn't been moved, just call my office, call the police department, and we'll check it out and they'll get ticketed. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Lorenzo, 166 London <coughs> Drive. Um, first, uh, Councilman Kamani, congratulations on the birth of your granddaughter. Great news. Also, congratulations on your retirement, and uh, thank you for your service as a teacher all these years. I know that's a rewarding career, and I'm sure you're going to miss it, and uh, just want to say thanks for all you've done. Thank you. Um, Larry, thank you, too. Uh, I know I was here last month's meeting. You weren't, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say... Uh, uh, you, you missed, uh, I got to know you a lot better over the last six or seven years, and uh, I can truly say you're a true gentleman, and uh, Thank you. Um, you will be missed, and uh, good luck in your future endeavors Thanks. in town. And uh, my dad as well is a former, or I should say, is a Marine, and uh, I share your sentiments as well. Uh -huh. um, I was here last month uh, and got into a little bit of banter, and uh, for that I apologize, but uh, uh, I know I mentioned to Councilman Pedagano, I, I reached out to him and asked him if he would um, be willing to come to a, to a board of rec meeting, but uh, he did write an email to us uh, stating that he did have a prior commitment, um, and I did reach out to him again in a follow-up email asking if he would like to uh, join us uh, in, a, in a special session. Uh, I have not heard anything, but I know tonight he did reach out to me and said he would try to make December's meeting on the 16th, and 16th, right. I would, that would be appreciated. I'm sure the commissioners would enjoy having you there so we can uh, have some dialogue. Um, 
Uh, Mayor, thank you for the update on that uh, on that grant regarding the uh, community development money for the kitchen for the rec. I know that was uh, an item on our, our to-do list, and uh, that twenty-five thousand will come very handy. Um, as many of you know, that kitchen is in uh, dire straits. It needs to be upgraded for safety reasons and uh, also to uh, enable our programs to at least try to make some money in that kitchen uh, when they have programs, basketball, hockey, indoor soccer, so on and so forth. So uh, that's good news. And um, we're looking forward to getting started with that project. Um, on, on a sour note, uh, Councilor Caramani, I'm, I'm you know, congratulating you, but I'm also a little disappointed again. I want to follow up on the, uh, on the vote that you did vote no to the grant money that we wanted to pursue uh, the project in English Avenue, as well as Councilman Pettigano. Uh, I know you originally had voted yes and you changed and voted no. Um, I, I still don't see how uh, you could put, you know, being you're around children all the time, how you could vote no to something that's going to be positive impact to the children and to a park that desperately needed some work. Uh, so in the future, I would I would hope that you would take the time to, at least if you have any questions, to uh, come to the board with your concerns so that proper light can be shed on these projects. Uh, I think you missed the boat on that, as well as uh, Councilman Pettigano. I think you, do, you did the town and justice by voting no to that. Um, and regarding that English Avenue project, I know uh, Councilman Pettigano had stated that uh, the projects could be half a million dollars. Well, I can. Again, I argued the fact that that was incorrect, and to date, uh, we spent $105,000 on that project. So well short of uh, a half a million that was uh, mentioned. Um, that's $105,000 out of the trust. We did get community money, community development money, that went towards that project. And that's not taxpayer dollars, that's dollars in the trust that are there for that particular purpose. And I don't see a problem in, in in creating a good, safe environment for the kids in this town. We have a crisis with fields that are inadequate. We don't have enough of them. And uh, that project, I'm, I'm glad to say, is moving forward and will hopefully come to completion sometime soon. Uh, the other comment that came up was regarding the, uh, the code. And uh, Councilman, you did mention about uh, the park uh, at, um, at Cherry Hill being uh, dangerous and, uh, well, just for your education, I did check on some of the, the uh, calls that came in regarding Cherry Hill Park. There have been a total of three complaints. So um, there are problems in every park. Uh, we have issues going on down at Gilbert. We have issues going down at Barrow Field. The police are well aware of it. Calls have been placed in. The chief, I know, is looking in, in looking into it, and doing his doing his best with the patrolman to uh, to see that these. Uh, occurrences or these issues are, are, are not happening frequently. But let's face it, um, the, side, you know, the sign of the times. Um, you mentioned the fact that maybe we could have spent that money on putting in cameras and so on and so forth. That's a big undertaking. Uh, and I'm aware that the, uh, the police department is looking into a uh, project where we can get grant money to do that. And I know that's down the road, but I do know that's a fact because um, I have some some contacts down in the Garfield Police Department, and they've done such work in their town, and Elmer Park is piggybacking and trying to pick their brains to see if uh, that would work here. So um, that would be a good thing. Um, you also mentioned the fact that being a commissioner, that we are supposed to police the parks. Um, I, I think, I hope you were not intending that policing be to be a police officer. Policing, I think the wording in the code, and it is here, it's, it says here under item E, improve, maintain, and police same, being the parks. Uh, I think we all need to police the parks. We all need to police the town. Um, if you see something going on, and I myself have, have been by my park at Birchwood, in my area, and this past summer there were uh, people from out of town that actually drove a vehicle onto Birchwood Park, turned the lights on after 9 o'clock to play basketball. Now. I live in the area riding by, I stopped, I dialed 911. I didn't go to, to up in front and confront anybody. I called 911, I called the officers here, and they came down within two minutes, showed them, boom, we took care of the problem. Um, I think that's everyone's responsibility in town, to police. 
and not just the commission. That's not what we would have volunteered to do, but it's our, all our responsibility to do that. And uh, with that, I look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. DeLorenzo, please. I uh, <clears throat> thank you for complimenting me about my work as a teacher. You're but listen, I learned that the best answer on time to give you is that I keep my mouth shut, and uh, this is where we stay friends. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> because you don't know all the details that went on on the voting for the grant. And if you say that I did something bad about the children, you're wrong. And I don't want to discuss this any longer, yeah, okay? It's well, not fair they make this accusation because uh, when we vote for the grants, yes, I did vote for the grant. And then, you know, when we saw the problem, at Cherry Hill, I changed my mind. And I think we should invest some money in other places. <coughs> and uh, the money, uh, listen, the best thing to do, I better keep quiet for now because I get very excited sometimes when the people don't know what they're talking about. Thank you very much. Well, if I can reply to that, I, I, I think you're a little disingenuous with that because I think it was politically motivated. I, I, I can see, you know, there was an election going on and um, obviously you want to stick to the party, party lines. Uh, and that's, to my opinion, that's the only reason why it was done. And I think that's, that's, not, that's not thinking in the best interest of the town. Um, that was thinking in the best interest of your party and your candidates. And that's my opinion. I mean, we could, we could argue this till the cows come home, but um, I think I'm correct. I know the way you are. You're like always to fight and have arguments with people. That's why I keep quiet. Thank you. Let the action take place. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? If not, I'll close the public portion of the meeting and uh, ask for a, uh, before I ask for a moment, a, a resolution to uh, adjourn the meeting. Cable Vision, Channel 77, Tuesday, 12 noon, Thursday, 4 p.m., Friday, 12 p.m. Okay? Look in there, watch this meeting over again. If you have any questions, call my office, call Mr. Kazmark, and we'll try to help. Thank you. Motion to adjourn, please. I move. Moved by Mr. Second. Caramagna, who is retiring at Second. the end of the year. The new Both grandpa. The and Mr. Castiglia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming.